to YSCOM Driving and today is uh, the launch of the new A-Class Limousine. Now, this A-Class Limousine fits just in between the A-Class hatch and the C-Class, which is also a limousine of sorts. Lah. Now, why do they decide to call it a limousine? It's because uh, Mercedes believe that the limousines is what made them famous and what, that's what made them popular. So, uh, although I did ask the question, because my idea of a limousine is something much bigger, but of course, what they're saying is this is a small-sized limousine, all right? So starting from the small, and this is to cater for the upgraders who are going to move from other makes to the first Mercedes, so to speak. And uh, they believe that the limousine will have a much better uh, acceptance than a hatch. I don't doubt that because most people see a Mercedes and see themselves in a Mercedes as a sedan and not as a limousine. Now, what's so great about this? There are two variants available and this, what you see in front of you is the A200. The other model is the A250 and here's the difference, yeah? Both of them basically look the same and they come with 18-inch wheels but the 250, A250G spec would have uh, AMG style rims. These are Mercedes rims, they're also 18 inch, but they're not AMG. Alright, now the two variants come uh, as CBU right now, but later there is talk of uh, CKD, which means it could be locally assembled. The, here's the difference in the two engines, yeah? This one is the A200. Now physically they will look very much the same. And the A200 comes with a 1.4 litre um, engine and uh, it is sold at uh, 229,000. I have these notes here so that I don't make a mistake. Yeah? And the uh, engine horsepower gives you 163 uh, horsepower and you get 250 newton meters of torque. Now the other A250 is more powerful. It has a 2 litre engine. Now both are 4 cylinders. The 2 litre engine will give you the new uh, horsepower of 224 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. Both of the cars will have a 7 speed dual clutch transmission and drive is, of course, to the front wheels, right? Okay, so uh, this is, let's just take a quick look at the outside. The front of the car is very A class. Okay, the A250, you will expect to see maybe some AMG stuff and some red lines here and there, yeah? Accents. This is the A200. Okay, and the wheels will be different. But other than that, the car uh, looks pretty much the same. Now, let's take a look at the inside. The inside of the car is... Uh, what Mark Green, the VP for marketing, said is the inside, or rather the A200 is the new digital age car. And the big uh, feature is the 10.25 inch display. As you can see, there are actually, there's more than one display. In the front, it's all uh, sort of like amalgamated into one. So there are actually two times 10.25 inch screens and that is the digital age of the Mercedes. Yeah, And uh, this car comes with uh, Apple Play and Android uh, Android Auto. Alright. Now inside the car, I don't know how it's done but there are actually 64 colors of ambient light. <coughs> now, looking at it, uh, it is very, very Mercedes. And uh, in the center of the dash, I'm going to go over to the other side. All right, here we are. Now, this is so Mercedes, okay? Of course, there is the, the Mercedes emblem in the center. It makes you... Remember, yeah, this is a Mercedes, makes you feel good, right? Uh, especially for Malaysians, this is a feel-good factor. 
uh, the Mercedes uh, signature here is the the adjustment for the seats yeah so this one is really nice because you don't have to reach down there it's all here you can adjust everything properly and uh, the aircon uh, louvers look pretty neat they look like wheels um, I see it with mixed feeling I prefer the old uh, what you call slats huh? but this is I suppose this is what the new people like everything is digitalized and there's a nice compartment here for you to oh yeah there's a power point here and this one says USB it's a picture of USB I, oops I'm gonna figure out how to open it oh no I don't know how to open it well uh, here's your drink holder and this is your touchpad and sort of like a mouse and rollers here to adjust oh please switch on emission to slack oh this is the drive drive button drive modes yeah okay uh ah look at this look here on my right hand this is the drive lever actually i look at this with mixed feelings yeah uh, it's not exactly sorry it's not exactly what i i like but i suppose if you want to have a touchpad here the gear lever has to be somewhere else and this one is very simple there is p uh, r and n and d of course so you can either go forward or reverse and park the car and the rest of it is all through the pedal shifters which is quite good so you can actually enjoy quite sporty driving with this seats are nice and leather and here's one extra thing here this one allows you to get more uh, support for your tie which is very thoughtful okay and uh, otherwise uh, let's have a look at the back seat okay my seat position just now was quite good and here i am i am uh, i don't know i think i'm an average size person and i still have about six inches on the boot now what is good about here is that you can put your shoes underneath underneath the seat so if you have very long legs you can still stick your legs underneath the chair and of course a little thing for your for your knickknacks and stuff and uh, another two usb usb no they are no usb they are micro usb all right okay here is the back end now uh, this part is not that great because what it lacks here is an air con vent for the rear passengers okay so yeah i suppose uh, when they built this car where they started with a hatch and here may pose a bit of an issue with people who are taller than me yeah so i suppose this car will be for not so tall people yeah especially if you sit at the back if you are tall you got to sit in the front otherwise you may have problems with the reach uh, with the headroom at the back okay the other safety things like uh, your isofix points and all is fine yep and of course i if i didn't mention it the seats are leather and ah here's the drink holder everybody is so obsessed with drink holders so you can actually put your drinks here yeah this drink holder hey, quite neat it folds out okay let's look at this yeah it folds out you put your drink here and it clamps so it doesn't drop okay you can sit three people but because there are uh, three belts yeah but i wouldn't really recommend it lah. it's a bit small at the back but of course leg room is still good okay let's move over to the boot here's a quick look at the boot and thanks adrian for the lighting no all right uh, this is the boot and as you can see inside the seats do split and fold and yes it is this is what I suspect what it is. It, this allows you to lower the front seat down. It doesn't, it doesn't go, but if you, if you press the button, I can see it has released. 
you can just push your long uh, item inside and it will push the seat down. Okay, as I suspected, the lighting here is not that good. There is no spare tire, so this must be run flats. Either that or they will give you a pump for the uh, spare, so there is no spare. All right, uh, that's it for the A200. The A250 will not be so much different. And uh, here's the engine. This is a four-cylinder. The presentation said it's 1.4. The spec sheet says it's 1.3. I would say it's 1.3 something something cc's. And uh, with the turbocharger unit, which you can see here, uh, you get the 163 horsepower, which is enough uh, for most people, yeah? So the two-liter engine also fits in here. It will be slightly bigger. And... That's about it. Okay, this is the engine control unit, yeah, the ECU, which is placed high. And uh, nowadays they have the ECUs in the engine compartment. I'm not so sure whether you will take the Malaysian weather well, but that's where everybody is putting it. So that's about it. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Bye.